Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm Trevor Fortune, and on behalf of the UWC Library, I would like to welcome you to today's training intervention. This morning's session will be presented by my colleague, Mrs. Annalisa Mente Mpako, who is uh, the Research Commons Librarian. Annalisa will uh, concentrate on uh, literature search strategies and more specifically on Science Direct Scopus and Google Scholar with the aim of equipping participants with skills to conduct effective literature searches uh, during the initial stages of a research project. During the session, please feel free to use the chat box to post any questions that you may have. Uh, myself and my colleague Jacques Manuels will, uh, at the end of the session, you will have an opportunity to post any further questions and we will attend to any unanswered questions that were posted in the chat box. I will now hand over to Annalisa, who will commence with the presentation. Over to you, Annalisa. Um, thank you, Trevor. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us uh, in our training session this morning. Um, I am going to share my presentation shortly. Can someone just confirm when they see it on the screen? I will do so. Okay. I can see your presentation, uh, Annalisa. All right, thank you so much, Trevor. Um, okay, today's session is uh, on databases and literature search strategies. So what I'm going to show you today is the different databases that you can use to find information for your research project or your thesis or whatever uh, form of research report that you are currently busy with. So I'm first going to show you um, Google Scholar, which is accessible on our library website, as well as under the A to Z list of databases. Followed by that, I'll show you um, Science Direct, as well as Scopus. Okay, so before we even go into the databases, I would like to briefly just explain what we mean by a search strategy. So normally you have your, your topic or your thesis topic or your research topic um, that is very long. Uh, then when you create a search strategy, you are shortening the topic into keywords um, that, are, that will assist you to find information on databases. So when you have a topic, you cannot use the whole topic to search on databases, but you must identify keywords. And that is where you begin your search strategy. So normally you identify the key concepts and the keywords, then followed by that, you decide how you're going to use these to find information on databases. So we have uh, Boolean search strategies um, or search operators. The most common one are the AND, the OR, and the NOT. So the AND retrieves records that include all search terms, e.g. corruption and politicians, as I have um, uh, put the example on my screen. Uh, so the AND operator normally um, shortens your, your search because once you enter corruption on a search database, then it will give you everything on, on corruption. But as soon as you enter the end operator, then it limits your results to the two keywords that you've connected with the end. The OR operator expands your search. Uh, it is used in cases where uh, maybe one or two more terms refer to the same thing, or one concept is referred to in different terms. Such an example is the one that I've put on the screen, um, settlements or dwellings. Okay, so what you're telling the database to do when you put an or in your search string is that you're telling it to give you both of the terms or a document that contains at least one of the terms that you've entered. The not operator is used to narrow your search. Um, it excludes anything that you've entered after the not. So I like to make the example of uh, Winema Tikizela Mandela. Um, most of the time when you enter that keyword, Winnie's uh, full name and surname, often the uh, items that will come up referring to Nelson Mandela or referring to um, 
Winnie Matigizela is Nelson Mandela's wife. So in, 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 in such cases, you would use the not operator to exclude um, uh, such items that dwell on Nelson Mandela as an individual or the two as a couple, but rather you'd focus your search on Winnie Matigizela Mandela as an individual. Then we have what we call as a phrase search. Phrase searching retrieves records that have terms that are combined as a phrase. So there's two types of keywords. You have keywords as in singular terms, or you have phrases such as student learning. Okay, so in order to tell the database to give you results on student learning, an example that I've just used, um, you use quotation marks to combine the two terms to form a phrase. Otherwise, if you don't use your quotation marks, then the database will read the, the, the keyword as student and learning as separate terms. Um, some databases um, are already have been upgraded and normally some of them, you don't have to use the quotation marks anymore because they have been developed to that stage. And as you type student, then it gives you suggestions if you want to look for student learning, student success, uh, and so on. But there are a few databases that still use the, the quotation marks for phrase searching. Okay, um, UWC Library has recently subscribed to um, LibKeySuit, which is a project of a company called Third Ion. We have the LibKey Discovery um, <coughs> integration that has been integrated into our UWC library website. Okay, so if you have used our library website recently, you'll notice two additional features where you can download an, a PDF, a full text of an, item, of an article immediately. Whereas previously you had to click on multiple links to get to the full text article or to the PDF. Um, so we also have the LibKey Nomad browser, which is an extension that you have to um, download and install on your browser, on your PC. Um, the LibKey discovery feature, you don't have to worry about that. It's been integrated onto the UWC Library website. But the LibKey Nomad um, browser extension that you have to download for yourself um, on your personal devices. We also have the browsing tool, which is also part of the LibKey Suite product. This is an application that you can download onto your mobile device as well as your, uh, your PC. Um, it is a nice way of arranging and accessing your journals. So it lists all the journals that the library subscribes to and has access to. And the nice thing about this is that you can read your journals offline once you've, download the, um, you've downloaded them and once you've saved them on your, on your account. Okay, so to download the Nipkey uh, Nomad browser extension, you have to go onto this URL displaying on the screen. The Nipkey Nomad browser supports the three uh, popular browsers, which is Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. So you go onto this URL and click on the relevant browser that's applicable to you. But then you install it. Then after that, you should be able uh, to work. But then to download and install Browsing, you can go onto App Store or Play Store, um, type Browsing, and then you find this logo, you download it. And then after that, it will ask you to put in your institution's credentials. So once you've put in your email address and you create a password, and then you will be synced to UWC's um, subscribe databases. Okay, then another thing that is going to uh, pop up in this session today is the function of the Mendeley Web Importer. Okay, so today we're focusing on databases only. So this is not a reference management tool session. So I will not be dwelling on Mendeley as a reference management tool, or I won't be dwelling on EndNote as a reference management tool, but it will be useful for me to point out uh, the functionality of these when we are searching within a database. So it's important that I mention them today, although there'll be um, follow-up sessions, uh, training sessions in the coming uh, week or so that uh, specifically deal with referencing, uh, importing references and making bibliographies. But um, 
even before the session, it's useful that you have knowledge of these and maybe you can download and install them in the meanwhile. So we have the Mendeley um, Web Importer, a browser extension that you also need to download for your PC. Okay, you go onto the URL that's displaying on the screen, then you download and install on your uh, Chrome browser. We also have uh, what is known as EndNote Click. This is also a feature that is embedded within databases and it helps you to export your uh, references from these databases into your reference library on, on, on EndNote. Uh, and I will show you when we're doing the session how this works. So this also doesn't come automatically with the databases. Um, after you've installed and downloaded your EndNote, then you need to refer that download EndNote click and um, install it on your browser. Okay, so I just wanted to point out to you these downloads that you would need to make before you do your search so that you don't get surprised when I'm doing my search and they keep popping up. You'll know that on your side, you're not seeing them because you haven't installed them. Okay, so these are my uh, contact details on the screen. Um, if you need to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with me, you can use these contact details. Or if you have any other inquiries, you can also use these contact details. Okay, now I will stop sharing my screen. Are there any questions at this moment before I go on to the, the live session for today? Um, hi, ma'am. Can you just uh, show us your email once again? You went a bit fast there. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, is it showing? Okay, can I move on now? Um, yes, thank you, ma'am. Um, I appreciate it. All right. Okay, so I'll stop sharing my screen. Jacques, are there no questions on the on the chat? No questions, ma'am. You can proceed. Okay. All right then. Okay, so this is the UWC library webpage. Um, in order to get to the UWC library webpage, you can do a Google search like I have uh, initially done um, and just type in UWC library and it will pop up. Alternatively, you can use this URL uh, at the top of the screen, lib.uwc.ac.za and it will take you to our um, landing page of the of the library okay so on the landing page as you go onto the page there is a pop-up box of a live chat where you can ask questions um, relating to uh, library material or any inquiries uh, referring to your research so as you can see it's asking you if you need help then you click on chat now and then start typing and the person who's um, on duty will try to respond to you and uh, assist you as much as possible. Okay, so now we don't need uh, that kind of help. So this is the web page, And at the top of the web page, you see the uh, library email address. So alternatively, if you cannot uh, get hold of me on my email, you can also use this email address to send uh, your inquiries to and someone will be able to respond to you. Okay, so this is our search box, Ukwazi, and I will click on the search box without typing anything because I want it to uh, I want to go to the login 
screen, which is appearing right now. Then I'll click on sign in. Then I'll enter my details, um, which are already here. And then I click on log in. Okay, once I've successfully logged in, my name will appear on the top right hand side of the screen. Um, I advise users to always log on to this uh, Ukwaza search before attempting to do their searches. The reason why I say this is because um, the sign in allows you to access uh, uh, information that is subscribed to by the UWC library and it saves you the steps of having to log in every time you see something that's relevant. So once you log in at the beginning, then you shouldn't be having problems. The other reason why I suggest uh, users to first sign in before they do a search is because sometimes um, I get queries from users saying they can't log into the library or they can't access a, a, a database. Um, and you find that they, they're not explaining themselves well in terms of which login screen that they're not able to get onto. So it becomes a train uh, and then eventually um, finding out that it's actually this screen that they didn't log onto. Okay, so that's why I always advise users to first log onto the library website and then they may proceed to go to the databases and do their search. Okay, so I'm currently logged onto the library website. There's the A to Z list of databases. The Google Scholar search is also below the UQAS search on the landing page, but I'm going to access it from the A to Z list of databases. So I'll click there. Then I'll click on G. Then I'll click on Google Scholar. Then I go to Google Scholar. All right. Okay, so in order for you to get the best results on Google Scholar, you first need to set it up uh, under settings. Then you click on settings. All right, so under search results, there's one thing that you need to change here. You can leave your uh, selection on search articles. Then you come and change this to EndNote for those who are using EndNote. So if you're using EndNote as your reference management tool, in order for you to get the import citation um, option to EndNote, you first need to set it up here. If you leave it on Bib text, then it won't appear on your search results screen. So do this for EndNote, and then you click Save. You go back to the settings again. Settings. Then you go to library links. Okay, so if your library links are not appearing like mine, what you need to do is to type University of the Western Cape in the search box and you click on search and then all of these will come up and make sure you tick everything that has got University of the Western Cape. This allows you to get links that will take you back to the Ukwazi catalog um, when the PDF of the article is not immediately available. But if you don't uh, tick these, then you might assume that the library doesn't subscribe to because you won't be seeing the full text at UWC link or check UWC or view at UWC links. So you have to activate your link, the, uh, the links yourself. Okay, so once this come up, just click on all four of them and click on save. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm going to do a search, um, a search example using the advanced search. So I'll leave the basic search and go to advanced search and I'll type in um, translation. I want uh, this word to come up and I want to find results on cultural loss, but I do not want these results of mine to include English, English translation or the English language. Okay, so remember the Boolean uh, operators that I mentioned before, in some databases, the advanced search is structured like this. So you don't see and or not here or the 
the quotation marks, but you enter your terms on the relevant search boxes. For example, if you have a phrase like I have done, I have a phrase search, which is cultural loss. I don't need to enter quotation marks here because Google has already um, built its uh, search box with the exact phrase um, option. So now I don't have to use the quotation marks. Like I have mentioned that some databases you'll need to use the quotation marks and some won't, you won't necessarily have to do that. Okay, and then where it says with at least one of the words, then that is where you'd be using your OR operator. Because if it says at least one of the words, then it intends that I want settlements or residents or dwellings. Okay, so you would enter all those terms here without entering the NOT operator. And then to use the NOT, I would like my search to exclude English. I don't want to, um, I don't want my results to include the English language. So this is where the NOT operator um, would be used in some databases. But with Google Scholar, it has been structured like this without the words, and then you enter the term. And then in another database, you have to enter the NOT operator. Okay, so we're not gonna uh, finish any further details. I'm just gonna click on the search. Okay, so I currently have 1,910 results. Okay, since I have activated my UWC links, this article is available as a PDF instantly, as well as through the UWC library website. Okay, so this is what I meant by activating your library links on the settings. Okay. All right, so if you would like to use uh, this uh, article, you're interested in it, then you click on the title if you want, or you directly click on the PDF um, icon to view the article. Okay, so there is my article then I would download to save it as a PDF, or you can select on print and other download options. Okay, if I go back to my results screen, now let's say I want to import this reference to my EndNote library. This is where um, the EndNote setting works. Okay, so once you've set that up, then you get this import into EndNote option. So if I click on this, Okay, it downloads um, my reference as a file. Then if I go onto my EndNote, it's telling me that my reference has been imported. Okay, if I look at another, um, if I look at another reference and I want to add it to my Mendeley library, then I click on the reference Okay, then I click on my Mendeley browser extension right at the top. I'm sure you can see it on the top uh, right hand side of my screen where it says Mendeley Web Importer. I click on that and it's already on my Mendeley. So I just click um, and then I add it to my library. Okay, uh, for someone who, ha who, who hasn't logged in before, this would first be a sign in screen, but I've already logged in. So I can just add my reference to my library and it's added. Okay, so there's two options to import your references using the EndNote import uh, option or using the Mendeley browser as I have mentioned that you have to download this for your for your browser. Okay, so the other thing that you can do on Google Scholar is to customize your search according to the date range that you would like. For instance, let's say we only want results from uh, 2017 to 2020. Okay, then you refine your search by clicking on search.
Okay, so the results have been further um, reduced to only 445 articles. But if you notice on the results, um, my keywords that I've entered, they still appear. So these are still relevant. So my cultural loss is showing as a phrase as I have instructed Google Scholar and translation is also um, appearing. And I don't see any results that mention the English language here as I have asked the database to do so. Okay, I'll do a new Google Scholar search. Okay, I'm going to, new, uh, to use a different search terms. I'm going to use teenage, teenage pregnancy. Teenage pregnancy and substance abuse. Okay, so I'm just typing this now here on the basic search just to show you how you connect your search keywords using the operators. Before this, I use the advanced search, which is already, which already has a built-in of the search operators, but now I'm using the, the, the basic search so that I can enter the end myself, like I have done. So I'm looking for um, any research items on teenage pregnancy and substance abuse. Then I click search. Okay, so I've got about 22,000 of these results. Okay, if you further want to narrow your search, you would add another uh, keyword or phrase. So now I am instructing the database to only give me teenage pregnancy and substance abuse that relates to South Africa. Okay, so you see, from 22,000 items right here at the top, my results have been further narrowed to 4,100 results because it has cut out everything that talks about teenage pregnancy and substance abuse, but doesn't refer to South Africa. So if there were at, um, items here that refer to um, other parts of the world or other continents, those are no longer on this uh, search now. Okay, so again, if you're interested in the article, you click on the PDF icon appearing on the right hand, of the, right hand side of the screen. Or in cases where you have uh, the view it at UWC link, then you click on view it at UWC. Then this should take us to the UWC library catalog. Okay, so as you can see, this is our Ukwazi catalog. You can download the PDF immediately over there. Or if you want to go the long route, you can click on Elsevier Science Direct Journals and it will take you to the, to the PDF link of the article. Okay, again, if you want to import any of these uh, references into your Mendeley library or into your EndNote library, you click on Import to EndNote. and it should appear under <clears throat> your list of imported, uh, your newly imported uh, references. Okay, so as you can see, there's my article that I've recently um, imported. Uh, yes, this one by Oyedele. So after I've downloaded that, it appears under my EndNote reference uh, library. Okay, I'll do another example. Uh, teenage pregnancy in South Africa uh, by Ready. I want to import this to EndNote. Okay, it downloads that file over there. Click on it. And then you go to your EndNote library. And there is my reference by Ready. It's already been imported to my EndNote library. Okay, now, if you wanted to um, import this to a Mendeley 
reference library. Then you click on the title. Then your web importer browser, which is at the top right hand side of my screen, you click on it. And there the reference is appearing. Mine is to just um, add the reference to my library or select any of my um, folders on the Mendeley library that I've created. Okay, so I've got different uh, folders, chapter one, exam project and so on. And let's say I want to import it on chapter two, then I do that and I click on it. So my reference uh, by toilet is now in my Mendeley reference library. Okay. So if I go back to my search results, let's say, okay, there's plenty of items that I see are relevant here, but I don't have the time to go through all of them now. What you can do is you can create a search alert. Okay, so now what you are doing, you are telling the database to save the search so that you don't have to do it again. Then I'm entering, um, my email address. So I enter my email address and I click on create alert. And it's up to me to decide how many results I want to see when this comes into my email. So I leave it on to show up to 10 results. Then I create alert. Okay, um, problem with creating my alert. Let me try that again. Okay, let me see if it's not sitting under my alert. Okay, so the, the alert that I've tried to create just now uh, was not a success, but this is one of my alerts that I have created before. Okay, so it's it, once you've created that successfully, it will come and sit under your alerts on your Google account. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think I've shown you everything I wanted to show you on uh, Google Scholar. Now I'm going to move on to the next database, which is a uh, science direct. So on the A to Z database list, I click on S, then I scroll down to find science direct. Okay, so I will first sign into my science direct account before I do anything. Okay, I've already created an account, so I'm just going to sign in. For a person who doesn't have an account, then you'd have to click on register. Then you finish uh, uh, the form with your details. And then after that, you, you should be able to log in once you've registered. Okay, so in my case, I've already uh, registered. I'll just click on sign in and I'll enter my password. Then I click on sign in. Okay, so creating an account on Science Direct or Scopus um, assist you with the, the added benefits of saving searches um, uh, onto your account, um, as well as also creating alerts. Okay, and also, like I said before, um, it also um, makes you understand all the sign in uh, screens because sometimes um, it happens that you did not sign on to the library website at the beginning, then somewhere somehow you are asked to sign in here, but then when someone sends that query, then they say they can't access 
uh, journals on Science Direct, whereas the problem is uh, the initial sign in on the Okwazi catalog search. Okay, so this is just a good practice uh, for your searches as well as when you have a query so that you can make um, a clear uh, statement of what the problem is. So now I've signed on to my Science Direct account. Okay, so before we go into the search box, I would like to point you out to uh, journals and books that are available on Science Direct. Okay, so I'm gonna specifically focus on books. Okay, so before you even type anything, there's many, many books that are showing us that there are more than 30,000 ebooks. And if you want which main um, has the most ebooks or how many And you check uh, to the one that is applicable to you. I'll make an example. I'll click on health sciences. Okay, so the number has been reduced further to 5,389 books. Again, you might notice that there are access types here. So the best thing to do before into these books, just click on subscribe to as well as open access. Okay. So you see our results have further been uh, narrowed to only 533 results. So it means everything that has been called out here, uh, UWC does not necessarily subscribe to, okay? So now everything that is showing up here under health sciences is items that UWC library has access to. Okay, so let's say we're looking for a textbook, um, or a book in nanomedicine, you just click on the title. Okay. And this is the cover of the textbook showing here. And these are the chapters. Okay, so you have chapter one, nanomedicine for delivery or therapeutic molecules. Okay, let's say I'm interested in this chapter. I click on book chapter, and then I click on download PDF. Okay, so it's downloading it to a zip file. And here is my PDF. So this is my chapter one from the online um, uh, book available from Science Direct. Okay, so you can only, this download PDF uh, icon is only activated once you click on a relevant chapter. Because if you notice, I haven't clicked on anything now, but this has been grayed out, meaning that it's inactive. But as soon as you select a chapter, then it uh, activates, or you can just click here on download PDF below the details of the article, or you can view the abstract to first read briefly about what the chapter uh, contains before downloading it. <clears throat> okay, so. To export citations from Science Direct, I'll click here, export citations. And uh, on Science Direct, you use the export citation to RIS if you want to export to EndNote. Okay, so I'm just gonna try that now. Export citation. Okay, I can't remember which chapter. Oh, okay, uh, Ajit. Then I go to my EndNote library. There is my reference, it's been exported, it's been imported. Okay. Okay, so, um, all right, so I've shown you an example of a book. Then if we go back, um, Science Direct is a multidisciplinary content database. So you can also find social sciences um, and business management items on 
the platform post. So let's click on Arts and Humanities and see what will come up. Okay, so already my filters have been uh, placed on items that are subscribed to by UWC Library as well as Open Access. So I'll click on the filmmaking book. Okay, so this is a book and these are the chapters. So if I open one of them, I can click on chapter two and I can download the PDF for chapter two. Okay, so there's my chapter two appearing. Okay, so if I go back, <clears throat> okay, so if I go back to the book and let's say I want to, to cite this using Mendeley now. So now I'm not using Mendeley, I'm not using a note, I'm using Mendeley then under export citations option, you won't see Mendeley here, but the web importer browser assists you to send your references to the Mendeley library. So again, you select the reference that you want to export and then you click on Mendeley. <clears throat> okay, so this is the book that we are referencing from. Then you would select the relevant chapter that you want to add to your Mendeley library. Okay, so I've shown you the collection of books that are available under Journals and Books on, uh, on Science Direct. So now we are going to go on to the advanced search. So on the advanced search, we are going to use the keywords. My keywords are COVID-19 and vaccine and manufacturing. So these are my three keywords. Okay, so as I have mentioned before, some databases will need you to enter uh, your end operators and your quotation marks for phrases. Okay, I'll show you a, a, a phrase search um, shortly. Okay, so our search box on Science Direct allows you to enter the keywords or the key terms at the top. Then if you're looking for items in a particular journal title, then you would enter the title of the journal over here. Or if you're looking for items by a particular author, then you would enter the details of the author, the same name and initial here, or their aff affiliation over there but we're not gonna go into those options today. So I'm going to click on search and see what comes up. All right, I've got about 1,900 results on my keyword search COVID-19 and vaccine and manufacturing. So what happens from the screen, you can refine your search results on the left-hand side of the screen by the years, um, under 2021, there's 1,361 results. Under 2020, there's 548. <clears throat> and under subject areas as well, you may um, refine your search results according to the subject area that you're particularly interested in. Otherwise, on the results, uh, you can click on the article that you would like. You download the PDF or you export it to your relevant um, reference management tool like I have been showing you. I'm not gonna do that now. So you can export to RIS and this will take you to uh, EndNote. Alternatively, you can use your web, web importer extension for Mendeley to transport your, um, export your results to your Mendeley library. But uh, I'm not gonna, uh, to that stage now. Okay, so what I want to show you. Okay, so these are my results and my keywords are coming up. The COVID-19 keyword is coming up. The vaccine is coming up. Um, the manufacturing is coming up. Sometimes 
your keywords won't appear on your title, but they will appear, <coughs> they will appear in your abstract. Okay, so yes, I see um, manufacturing there. Okay, so as much as my manufacturing keyword is not appearing in the title, but it's mentioned in the abstract. So you must also be aware of that. Sometimes your keywords won't necessarily appear on the title of your journal, but the database will retrieve articles that mention those keywords in the body of the article. So, Okay, so if you click on download, it takes you to your article. Okay. Okay, now what I want to demonstrate to you, remember I said the end operator further narrows your search. So now that I've entered this, uh, these keywords, COVID-19 and vaccine and manufacturing, but now I want to exclude every other thing that is not related to South Africa, like I had done with the teenage uh, pregnancy and substance abuse search. So now I want my results and my keywords to refer to South Africa only. Because South Africa is a phrase, I am going to insert my quotation marks. Okay, and I click on search. So my results have been narrowed from 1,900 to only 275 because now I am I'm excluding everything that is not related to South Africa. So I am withdrawing <clears throat> all the other COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing related results um, discussing other parts of the world, but now I'm only wanting to view South African related results. And as you can see, South Africa is appearing on my, on some of my titles and COVID-19 is also appearing on some of my titles. Okay. So I just hope um, you can understand and follow the keyword search and how the strategies work. Okay, so remember I said you must set up your, uh, you must create an account so that you are able to set up the search alert. Okay, so I can name my search. Um, I can name my search alert COVID nineteen vaccine. Okay, and then I can decide the frequency if I want um, weekly alerts or monthly alerts. I leave it on weekly and I click on save. Okay, so when you, search, uh, when you set up a search alert, one, you are saving your search so that you don't have to do it again. And secondly, you are setting up the search so that any other new items or new publications that get added onto the database, um, you're asking the database to notify you when that happens. So if there's two more articles that get published on this topic, on this particular um, keyword, then the Science Direct database will send me an email to say new publications or new editions. In that way, you follow your search keywords and you get updated on new developments on your research topic as a whole. All right. Okay, so as I said, again, you can refine your results according to the years. So I can click on 2021 uh, and then I'm left with only 2019. Or if I want to go back to 2020, then I do that. Then I'm only shown 54 results that were published in 2020. Okay. All right, now we are going to move on to the Scopus database. So my 
my Scopus database under the A to Z list. I'll click on S to find Scopus. Then I click on Scopus. Okay, so uh, this is my Scopus database. Again, you can create an account if you don't have one, or you can sign in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sign in because already, I already have an account with Scopus. Okay, all right. So since I've logged in multiple times, it's not even asking me to enter my details anymore, but uh, yes, they are displaying there on the right-hand side of the screen. So those are my details. I can sign out if I want. So I'm signed in already. So Scopus is an abstract, uh, it's not a full text database. So it's a citation and abstract database. But with the new development and integration of the LibKey Nomad browser extension, which is appearing on the top right-hand side of my screen, there next to the Mendeley extension, you are able to download articles that have been located by the by the feature. I'll show you that shortly. Okay, so I'm going to do another search with Scopus. Um, let me use the the teenage pregnancy example again. Teenage pregnancy. And okay, I'm going to say now and South Africa, I'll leave substance abuse. Okay, teenage pregnancy and South Africa. So as you can see, I'm using my I'm using my keywords. I'm using my keywords as search phrases. So that is why I am including um, the, the quotation marks so that the database recognizes these as phrases, not as uh, individual terms. Otherwise, I would get results on that draw everything that has the term South and Africa, even though it won't be South Africa. Then I click on search. Okay, so we have about 147 results. And then lip, uh, lip key browser extension feature is popping up on my screen on the left-hand side to indicate that there are articles that are available for, for download. As I've said, Scopus is usually an abstract in the citation database. It doesn't contain full text uh, downloadable articles, but with the LibKey Nomad browser, it tells you when a PDF is available through open access, like the first one, then it gives you the option to download it. Okay, so I'll click on the first one on the download PDF uh, icon by LibKey. I click on that. And LibKey is busy locating the article and here is the article. Okay. So if I go back, um, you'll see articles that say um, download PDF and some will say, um, Article link. Okay, let's see what article link will have. Okay, so article links takes you to another page where you can download the PDF. Okay, 
So for this article, there is no PDF download, and then it would mean that uh, you have to request it through interlibrary loans um, on our Ukwazi library search. Okay, I'll click on the second one that doesn't have <coughs> libkey. I'll click on find it. Okay. So find it takes us to the to the Ukwazi search. And you can download the article through the available online link. Okay. There is another option I wanted to show you. Mm. Okay. And also next to the download PDF article uh, by Libkey, there is view complete issue, which will take us to the browsing app that I mentioned before. So I'll click on this. I'll click on um, browsing view by issue. Then it's loading browsing. Okay, because I have already logged on to browsing, it's not asking me to log in. But if I hadn't logged in, it would appear somewhere uh, on the right hand side of my screen. Then I would be able to log in. And then I'll be able to view my browsing library and my bookshelf. Okay, so if I go back, let's view another one that you can add to the uh, bookshelf. The influence of school contextual factors on education. I will view this on browsing. View complete issue. Okay, then what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add it to my bookshelf. Click on add to my bookshelf. The publication has been added to your bookshelf. Okay, so the bookshelf is the one that you can read offline on your mobile device. So everything that is under my bookshelf and I switch off uh, my Wi-Fi uh, or connectivity, I'll still be able to read these offline on my mobile device, but it has to have the browsing app installed. Okay, so the nice thing about browsing is that um, from Scopus, we were only following one article the influence of school contextual factors, but you are also able to see other articles within this issue. Okay, so this is the one that we are looking at, but you are also um, able to see other um, articles that may be relevant. And what you can do is you can download your PDF or you can link your article uh, maybe to your eCanva, um, module for your students to download, or you can share as, uh, as you wish. And also you can go back to previous issues. Here's your 2016 issue and volume. Then you can go into each article um, individually. Then you may also save some of your uh, articles under your articles folder. So that is the, one of the nice features that is brought upon us by the browsing um, the browsing application. <laughs> okay, so in terms of exporting uh, citations on, on Scopus, you would normally click on the relevant, um, the relevant article that you want. So as I've just clicked on here, if I don't click, you see the export citation feature is, is grayed out, it's deactivated. So you first have to select the reference that you want to export. Then you click on export. And here on the Scopus uh, database, Mendeley has been added. So you click on Mendeley and then you click on export. An error occurred. Okay, let's try another one. I'll try the second one. Then I click on export at the top. Mm. Also, size domain delay. Sorry. Can you please repeat that?
Okay. Alternatively, if the Mendeley button is not, uh, oh, it says save to Mendeley. Okay, so I click on save to Mendeley. Okay, now it looks like there is a problem with this button because it should not be changing to save to Mendeley or export to Mendeley in one session. Okay, so if this is not uh, working like it is giving us an error message now. You can always go back to your browser extension. Okay, so here, okay. Uh, Let me try another. Okay, I'm going to try another reference and use the export. Okay, I'll click on this one. Export and refine. Nope. Save to Mendeley. Okay, let's try and save to EndNote rather. Okay, so this is our EndNote RIS format. I'll click on EndNote and click on what information would I like to export. I want the citation information only. Okay, and then I click on export. Okay. That was by Ajayi. Now I go to my Mendeley reference. There is my Ajayi reference. Okay. All right, so, so let's try this one more time with Mendeley. I'll click on uh, Saved Mendeley. Then I click on Citation Information. Okay, no, oh, there's definitely a, a problem with the Mendeley option. Okay, so. Let me delete my search string here. Now I want to show you when you opt to add uh, additional fields. Okay, so I'll type in my search keyword, <coughs> COVID-19. Okay, so now what I'm doing, initially I search my terms on this search documents, uh, search box now i'm showing you that you can also use the add uh, field option to expand your search and to also get the different um, search strategy and operators that we use so there's your end there is your not okay so if you want to use and you can click on end and then type in the next keyword vaccine so in this instance we do not want uh, we do not want our results to include south africa so initially in my search we expanded uh, we narrowed our search so that it may have only south african related uh, results so now we are using the not operator to exclude south africa so it's the other way around so even so, you still enter your, you still insert your quotation marks so that the database recognizes uh, South Africa as a search phrase. Okay, so we're looking for COVID-19 related articles and the vaccine in South Africa. Uh, my other keyword was manufacturing. Manufacturing. Okay. So I click on search. All right. So I've got about 13,900 results. And in these results, there won't be anything that mentions South Africa. Okay.
All right. Um, okay, so it's referring to other parts of the world. Okay. Okay. Let's say if you wanted to to further um, narrow your search, maybe you wanted uh, the Pfizer vaccine or the Johnson and Johnson and so on. You would also use these operators to say and, or if you want to exclude the other, then you'd use not. Okay, so these operators are used um, in such instances. All right, and again, if you want to edit this, you can go here. But if you want to save the query, you can click on save, then it will go onto your account. When you come back to this, uh, when you come back to the database, this will be saved under your account. You won't have to do it again. And also you can set up an alert so that it notifies you every time when there is a new item added onto uh, your search keywords. So my details are already here and I choose the frequency and the particular day that I would like. Okay, then uh, I click on set alert. Okay, so if I want to view my search alert and my saved queries and everything, I go onto the right hand side of my screen to click on my name and then click on save searches. All right, so this is what I mean by saying, if you are particularly interested in these results, you don't have to do them all over again. You just need to save your search. And when you come here, it will retrieve everything that was here. And even the ones that will be added at that time. Okay. So also with your search alerts, you can view them here and you can activate or deactivate them or even delete them completely. Okay, colleagues, um, I think we are approaching the end of our session today. I have shown you everything that I wanted to show you. I uh, showed you how to set up your Google Scholar search, the settings that you need to have before you begin. I also emphasize signing into your uh, library web page, which is our Ugwazi catalog. Um, I showed you uh, the functionality functionality of the LibKey Nomad browser. I showed you the functionality of the Mendeley Web Import browser, as well as um, exporting references to EndNote. Okay, so remember in the beginning I showed you my presentation where you can download all of these things so that they are integrated within your browsers and you are able to do your searches like I have been doing. Okay, and if you need assistance with downloading. Um, all these uh, add-ins and web browsers, you can contact me in the contact details that I showed you earlier. Um, and also you can look out for these reference management tool sessions, which are coming up, the Mendeley uh, reference management tool session, as well as the EndNote um, reference management tool session. Um, from my side, that is it for today. If there are any questions, um, Trevor and Chuck, can you please assist me? Yes. Uh... Annalisa, there's two that I thought that I'd highlight uh, that was in the chat box. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was from uh, Anya Berika, and she wanted to know which database is the most extensive. I thought I'd just uh, pop that up here, and so uh, we can take Expensive. Back. The most extensive. Oh, okay. Um, uh, from between uh, Web of Science and Scopus, I think those two are the top. Um, also EBSCO host, um, and also in terms of subject specifications, uh, the databases differ. Okay, so you'll find that um, Anthea's topic is more coverable on another database, okay? But the top three that I know um, personally would be um, Science Direct, uh, Web of Science, and EBSCO host. Okay, I um, have another question of the chat box, but I see Sylvain um, has got his hand up, so I think uh, we can allow him an opportunity to ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much um, uh, for the presentation. I came late. Uh, can I get um, your uh, details again, your contact details? You okay, mentioned that I'm... you gave them at the beginning. Uh, I, I was not here yet. 
All right. It is on the check box, uh, Andrisa. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, any other questions, Trevor, colleagues? Yes, there is one from uh, Louis Dippenar that I thought I'd pop up here as well, and she wanted to know, would you recommend searching a specific database rather than using the advanced search option in Ukwazi? Mm, yes, um, in terms of uh, the technologies that uh, database is used, the Ukwazi search, yes, it's an extensive search that draws from different, uh, it draws from different sources, like the databases that I've just shown you, but it doesn't go as deep as when you do the search in the database. For instance, I showed you um, a books and ebooks that are available on on, on Science Direct, remember the ebooks I showed you, uh, where you use your domain to, to, to check for subscribed books and you download the chapters, those do not appear on the Ukwazi search. So if you don't go into the database, then you'd be depriving yourself from accessing all those freely available ebooks. It's the integration that I'm also not able to explain. Maybe a person from ICS would be able to explain, but the Ukwazi search doesn't cover everything but it is a good uh, starting point for when you're doing your search. But when you want to do an advanced search, it is advisable that you go into the individual databases. Thank you, Annalisa. I think we've covered all the questions. Um, a final opportunity for anybody to ask a last question before we uh, end the session. Um. Mr. Morton, can you just mention about the recording that will be made available on uh, on the Canva? Please. Yeah. Um, with the recording, what we do is we make it available um, by Canva, and uh, we obviously need to edit it before we make it available. But uh, we usually try and do it a couple of days after um, the session. Jacques, I'm not certain if you want to add anything to to what I said. Uh, that that's it, Mr. D. If they can. Um... Email library research at uwc.ac.za to, to be added to the module on Ecamba, on our Ecamba page. So can you just uh, highlight the question? I see there's another question from Mr. Safadin. I think uh, if you could just highlight that first. Uh, Mohammed is asking, is there a strong possibility that the same articles or books will appear in different uh, databases? Sorry, can you please repeat that, Chuck? Is there a strong possibility that the same articles or books will appear in the different databases? Mm. Okay, so for instance, if you do this search on Science Direct, it, the same articles appear on Scopus, for example. I think that's what the user is asking. Yeah, I think that's what you no, I think with, with 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 Google Scholar, with Google Scholar compared to databases, that may happen, but I don't think it's necessarily the case with Scopus, Science Direct, and EBSCOhost. But it does happen at times where the coverage of general articles um, duplicates across uh, duplicates across the databases. But it's not. It's not very often that that, that uh, this happens, but I know with Google Scholar, you can do a Google search, the articles will come up, and then if you do the uh, the same search on a database, some of those articles that appeared from Google Scholar will also uh, will also uh, come uh, come up. Again, it goes back to this thing that I mentioned about the integration of all the knowledge databases, the Ukwazi search, the Google Scholar search, and the individual databases. So somewhere, somehow, there'll be one or two articles that overlap. But the best search is to go individually into the search databases. The good starting point is the Ukwazi and the Google search. So you go from Ukwazi, Google search, and then you advance to the individual databases. So I, I always put it in that way. Oh, thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. I'm not certain if there's any uh, further questions. Jacques, do you see any, any questions? 
Um, sorry, can you just repeat the Ecamba Wudu email? You can email me. Um, you can email on the details of, uh, on the screen, or you can email the library um, dash uh, research at utwc.ac.za. Uh, just to add, you will be able to find this on the library website, lib.uwc.ac.za. You'll be able to find all the uh, contact details there as well. Thank yes. you very much. If there isn't any further questions, then this concludes the session for today. Thank you, Annalisa, for a very insightful presentation.